Newton's grasp of gravity was sufficient to enable us to travel from the Earth to the Moon. Ever find yourself disoriented in the relentless march of time, questioning if our comprehension of it is merely the surface of a deeper mystery? His discovery is not just a hypothesis, it's a key that could unlock the secrets of the universe, unveiling a cosmos more complex and awe-inspiring than we ever imagined. How does Brian Cox's novel theory challenge our conventional understanding of time, and what could it mean for how we perceive reality? 32 Seconds Join us on a fascinating journey through the fabric of time as we explore Brian Cox's recently revealed, groundbreaking hypothesis on the nature of time in the vast cosmos surrounding us. Riddles are waiting to be solved, many of which revolve around strange aspects of time and gravity, both integral components of our existence. Picture a world where time behaves oddly, it can either slow down or accelerate. Moreover, the force that keeps us grounded may not be what we think. This is the realm of Albert Einstein's theories of relativity. One minute and six seconds. Here, our perception of time and gravity takes an unexpected turn. Albert Einstein, a name familiar to all, presented us with a fresh perspective on the universe through his theories of relativity. His work formed the foundation for understanding how time behaves under various circumstances, especially when moving at incredibly high speeds. It all began in the early 20th century, when Einstein introduced two revolutionary ideas, the special theory of relativity and the general theory of relativity. The special theory of relativity, published in 1905, transformed our conception of time and space. Simply put, it asserts that the laws of physics remain consistent for all observers who are not accelerating, regardless of their motion. This theory introduces the concept of relativistic effects, such as the well-known idea that time can stretch or slow down under certain circumstances. 1 minute and 38 seconds. One captivating thought experiment often used to explain time dilation is the light clock. Imagine being inside a spacecraft moving at an extremely fast speed, near the speed of light. Inside the spacecraft, there's a light beam bouncing between two mirrors, perpendicular to the direction of travel. According to the laws of physics, the speed of light remains constant for all observers. So, the light beam must appear to follow a longer, diagonal path for the external observer. The time it takes for the light beam to traverse the path should be identical for both the observer inside the spacecraft and the one outside. However, since the path is longer for the outside observer, it seems to take more time for the light to complete its journey. This perceived time difference between the two observers is what Einstein referred to as time dilation. Time moves slower for the observer in motion, relative to the stationary one. In this case, time behaves differently depending on your velocity. 2 minutes and 40 seconds. Understanding how objects change when they move quickly, also known as relativistic effects, is not merely a theoretical idea. Scientists use large machines, like particle accelerators such as the Large Hadron Collider, to propel particles to near-light speeds. When objects move at such high speeds, we must consider time in a special way to make precise predictions and measurements. Albert Einstein introduced the special theory of relativity in 1905, and it revolutionized our understanding of the universe, particularly concerning time and motion. 3 minutes and 12 seconds. This theory challenges what we might intuitively believe. It states that the principles of physics are the same for everyone, even if they are not at rest. This differs from our everyday experience, where we might assume that if something is already in motion and we add more speed, it simply gets faster. However, Einstein's theory says there's a maximum velocity that nothing can exceed, the speed of light. In this framework, events that seem simultaneous for us might not appear the same to someone moving close to the speed of light. Another concept that arises from this special way of thinking is length contraction. This means that an object appears shorter in the direction it is traveling when viewed from a stationary position. 4 minutes and 16 seconds. Additionally, there's the famous equation E equals mc squared, which shows that energy and mass are interchangeable. This is crucial for understanding how tiny particles behave when moving at high speeds, and also for explaining processes like nuclear fission. In the real world, special relativity isn't just an abstract idea, it's something we rely on in everyday technologies such as GPS. When GPS satellites send signals to your device, they are in motion, and due to this movement, time behaves slightly differently for them. If we didn't account for time dilation in our GPS calculations, your location data would be significantly inaccurate. Thus, 
special relativity teaches us that time is not uniform across all places and circumstances. It depends on how things are moving. 5 minutes and 22 seconds. This notion challenges our typical understanding of time and space. It's as if our conventional view of the universe is a bit flawed. According to the special theory of relativity, time isn't constant, it is influenced by motion. Some fundamental ideas, such as the constancy of the speed of light and the relationship between energy and mass, have been confirmed by numerous experiments. However, there's more. 5 minutes and 57 seconds. Enter Albert Einstein's general theory of relativity from 1915. This theory delves deeper into the connection between gravity and the structure of the universe. It reshapes the traditional notion of gravity as merely a force that attracts objects. Instead, it proposes that gravity arises because space and time are warped or curved. It's like saying gravity isn't an invisible force, it's just how things naturally move in the universe. Due to the vast distance, the journey could span many years in Earth time. However, for the astronauts traveling near the speed of light, only a few years might pass aboard their spacecraft. This discrepancy illustrates time dilation, a real and measurable consequence of Einstein's theory of relativity. While this effect becomes significant only at extremely high velocities, close to the speed of light, it highlights a fundamental truth. Time is not absolute. It bends, stretches, and compresses depending on the conditions of motion and gravity. This realization has not only reshaped our understanding of physics, but also inspired new questions about the nature of reality. Brian Cox's contribution, Rethinking Time Itself. Enter Brian Cox and his novel hypothesis, a fresh lens through which to examine time and the universe. Cox suggests that time, rather than being a linear river flowing from past to future, might be an emergent property of more fundamental laws. In this view, time is not a backdrop against which events unfold. It may arise from the relationships between particles and fields, deeply woven into the structure of space-time. Cox builds upon ideas from quantum mechanics and thermodynamics, especially the notion of entropy, the measure of disorder. According to the second law of thermodynamics, entropy tends to increase, giving time its one-way arrow. Cox speculates that this directional flow of time might be an illusion caused by our perception of entropy increasing, not a fundamental feature of the universe itself. In some interpretations, particularly from the realm of quantum cosmology, all moments, past, present, and future, exist simultaneously in a block universe. Within this framework, time doesn't flow, but simply is. Each moment is eternally real, like frames on a film reel. We experience them sequentially, but that sequence might be more about consciousness than physics. What this means for reality? If Cox is correct, and time is not a basic property of the universe, it challenges much of what we assume about causality, existence, and experience. The implications are profound. Free will may be an emergent illusion within a deterministic framework. The future could be just as real as the past, already written in the fabric of space-time. Time travel, at least to the future, is possible in theory, via relativistic speeds. Travel to the past, however, remains highly speculative and possibly forbidden by quantum effects like Hawking's chronology protection. Ultimately, Cox's perspective encourages us to look beyond the surface of time and explore its quantum origins. As technology advances and our tools for observing the universe improve, we may soon gather evidence to confirm or refute these bold ideas. Until then, the true nature of time remains one of the greatest mysteries in science, a riddle interwoven with gravity, motion, entropy, and perhaps consciousness itself.